Hello from Aktau city, Kazakhstan. No, this is not a vlog, this is not a travel video. It's a kind of travel video, but this is a video about a set of equipment that you may need to take with yourself if you're going to film a group of people who are going to swim across the Caspian Sea from the Aktau city till Baku, Azerbaijan. So let's get into it. I mean, into it. Perhaps some of you will skip the video or will not watch till the end. That's why I want to mention the things which I regret a lot for buying and also taking it with me to the trip. No, no, no. That's not a big gray cloud on the sky. That's a big shitty X on the ND filter which is made by KNF for Osmo Pocket 3. Basically, KNF just screwed up my daytime shootings with the useless variable ND which is made for Osmo Pocket 3. So dear colleagues, be careful, keep in mind that this is not going to help you, vice versa, this is going to help your daytime shootings. Right, next one. In the first part of the video, I'm going to talk about the equipment that I was thinking they are really, really essential in this project, but unfortunately, they didn't really work. Not because they are bad, just because they are not made for this project. And I will start with my one of the favorite lens, Sigma 70-200mm. Now I'm going to change the lens and switch to 70-200mm and try to improvise and explain what I mean when I say it's not really useful in these conditions. Right now I'm filming on 100mm and as you can see there are no big waves on the sea. But it looks like the ship is working like crazy. And that's what I mean, when you have just a little bit movement on this end, you cannot really catch, you cannot really keep anything in the frame. Oh my goodness, I thought I'm... I thought that's the end. That might work if you're trying to show how crazy is the sea or just trying to capture the rocking. But in my case, if you're trying to capture someone who is swimming on the sea, that's not the case. For me, it's not acceptable, but maybe for some people it's fine but i cannot use this footage for my films as long as i have really 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 important information in that footage that's why this is going to go back home soon with the other ship which is coming to replace this one within 10 days that was also update about our trip because we're going to change the ship in every 10 days the second very important equipment that i'm not able to use are the wireless microphones one of them is hollyland another one is my Rode Wireless Go 2. And if you ask why, because people are wet, they are most of the time on the sea and it doesn't really make sense to put a wireless microphone which is not waterproof. That's why I was saying, I wish one day they make water resistant wireless microphone. By the way, I made another video about Holyland Mark II that's coming soon and I think Holyland is not going to like it, but I can't do anything, so it's... I brought two lights with me, small rig RC60B and newer RGB1, which I'm using at the moment. Only newer RGB1 is kind of useful because I use them for my YouTube videos. They are magnetic and easy to mount anywhere. The whole ship is brightened up with these tube lights. They are really good for filming. And for that reason, Small Rig RC60B is not going to be a part of this project, unfortunately, because it's not really working here. I really don't need extra light. And also I'm on run and gun project. That's why it doesn't make sense to set up a light. At the same time, I would say this is the one you would like to take with you because it has an internal battery. It has type C charge support and it is easy to mount as well, but not for this project. Next one. Next one is not is are my ND filters. I got four different ND filters. Only one of them, full ND 2 to 400 from Go is helping me here. The others are not enough to reduce the sunlight. So right in the middle of sea, you try to reduce the sunlight with the maximum power of ND, otherwise you get like really overexposed shot. This is the variable ND filter made by Coop and it works pretty well except in 24 millimeters. In 24 millimeters you have a little bit of vignette but overall it's a good quality. Another very important thing is the power supply and I got this 50,000 milliampere hour power bank just before the trip. I thought I will need it. Thank goodness we have like power plugs in every corner of this ship and 24 hours power supply, which made our job really easy. 
but this is a really good one small 50,000 and it has a lamp on it so you can use it as a table lamp and charge your computer charge your old devices maybe i should stop here talking about useless or not really helpful equipment and continue with the great things that made me really happy to take with me. And the first thing is this Osmo Pocket 3. Let me zoom in. As you can see, one of the best features is the face tracking or object tracking. I know the Osmo Pocket 1 or 2, the previous versions also has this feature, but this one is a bit different. I think the most efficient way to talk about this new feature would be walking around the room and letting the AI or face tracking or active tracking do the job. So Okay, now it lost me. Once I'm back, continues tracking. If I go really into details, it's going to be a review for Osmo Pocket 3, which I wouldn't mind, but this video is not about Osmo Pocket 3. So let's continue with the suitcase. The second one is my main camera FX3 together with 24 70 mm GM. This is what I use most of the time for filming. Sony FX3 full rig without V-mount battery with 24 70 mm G Master and of course variable ND on top of it from GOP, Video Mic Pro Plus from Rode and Wiltrox monitor and of course Fulcom rig for FX3. And third one is the Wiltrox monitor. Actually I'm using it at the moment but this is the case. I made another video about Wiltrox in details so if you want to learn more about this monitor, you should turn on the notifications and get notified when it's being published. Right, if you are going to work on a project, especially on the sea, if you have limited energy supply, you definitely need power banks. On this ship, fortunately, I don't need them a lot, but I still need V-mount batteries because they charge my camera, they charge my microphones, they charge my monitors and other things which I'm using while I'm shooting. That's why these are crucial. In the beginning of this video, I mentioned how bad is KNF ND filter variable ND filter. Luckily, I could get ND filters by DJI. They are not variables, but they work pretty well. And there are three of them ND16, ND64, and ND256. I didn't go in details, like, I didn't check it like color shift or other things, but it works pretty well except the design because when you put it on your camera, the camera doesn't get the starting position and that's a bit disappointing not a little bit but that's disappointing unfortunately you have to take it off every time before you turn off your osmo pocket <laughs> let me see what else do i have this is not an equipment for filming but just in case let me mention that you need a lot of this because you don't have network you don't have connection you cannot store it on online storage that's why you need a lot of this and if you calculate how big is one minute file on sony fx3 you can see how many of them you need that and the next very important thing of course the video tripod i brought a photo tripod with me and i converted it into a video tripod and that one is in that small catamaran i was not able to use my tripod finally here i have plenty of space to use my tripod Speaking of tripod, this is a photo tripod, but I converted it to a video tripod by adding this three wheels by newer. This is a foldable attachment with wheels. You can attach it to your any tripod, put the legs or pods of your tripod, and then you tighten it and make it moving tripod or movable tripod. Such a great tool for this type of project because I don't have to lift my tripod and run you can just push it back and forth, left and right. And this is the monitor by Wiltrox. The design, the quality, ergonomics, brightness, as I said, is exceptional. But it doesn't record internally, which is totally fine because I don't need that. Detail review is coming, so turn on the notifications. Without the super clamps and articulating arms, this project wouldn't happen, or at least it wouldn't be the same. I'm pretty sure about that. I don't mount my cameras and other valuable stuff. I also secure my stuff with these clamps when the ship is rocking like crazy. And I will say this is the most important secondary class equipment for this type of project. So take as many as possible if you're going to film on the ship. This small magnetic is very strong, made by Benro. Works really well with this type of cameras or small equipment. There is another one with three pods. Also really strong one made by Ulanzi. For this curvy surface, 
these guys are much better. Really good one. And of course, some bigger stuff for heavy duty. I would say don't forget to take at least one universal plug with multiple input and outputs. Has input for Europe, UK, or the US, and Australia or Japan. I don't know which one is it, but you can plug it anywhere around the world. I hope I didn't forget anything important, but let me wrap up and go over it. So the main camera, whatever you use, also take something like Osmo Pocket 3 or GoPro and waterproof cameras, action cameras like Osmo Action or GoPro. Many clamps, as many as possible, super clamps and articulating arms, Velcro tapes, also a lot of V-mount batteries. These are very important. And of course your laptop. See you in the next one.